Uh, body Andy here again. Another one of those videos that uh, could well take quite a long time because um, yesterday I went to uh, another funeral and if anybody follows my sort of Twitter feed or my Facebook page which is linked to the Twitter feed and incidentally I'll mention that very quickly I was at this funeral yesterday talking to someone who a local person musician who recently added me as a friend on Facebook <laughs> and he's not he's not the most com computer literate sort of guy great musician though and um, and he said oh he said your face I keep getting all these messages every time I turn on my Facebook it's filled up with your messages and I said well that's my Twitter feed so I tried to explain it <laughs> so if that happens to you and if I'm bombarded you with Twitter messages on your your Facebook page please let me know because maybe I'll change the settings I don't want to annoy anyone but because uh, I do tend to tweet quite a lot but once again getting back to the topic um funerals now someone actually put on my Facebook page yesterday I happened to mention that I think I said something like another day another funeral it seems like that sometimes um, or potential funerals that I could go to in some else. And someone actually put up there, you seem to have a sort of a preponderance for death in your life at the moment. And it does seem that way sometimes. I know that it's possibly, once you get to a certain age, and now I'm in sort of early 50s, and you start to, that sort of thing starts to happen. Either people, relatives, older people, uh, start to die you know unfortunately but they've lived their life and you know and, and there is that side i did tackle that in the video not long ago about a particular funeral i went to of a person who was in their 60s yes it's too young but they lived a pretty full life and that person had to but at the moment i seem to be going through that sort of phase with people who are either my age or people who are younger than me um, two funerals that I couldn't get to either of them, unfortunately, recently. Someone that I used to work with who died of cancer at the age of 44, you know, and that's uh, that's quite a shock. I had seen the guy not long before he died, and I knew he was just starting a, a course of chemotherapy, etc. And I've seen him a couple of times to have a little chat, and he seemed fine at the time, and apparently he was fine right up to pretty much the, the weekend that he died, and then he just sort of slipped into a coma and was gone. Now, but I'm only come to that sort of point about whether that's the best way later on in this video, if I remember. The other guy had been ill for quite some time, and uh, you know, fair play to him, he'd managed to hang on for a long, long time, or probably longer than a lot of people. Um, expected him to and I don't think he suffered too much as, as much and he once again he died from cancer but I think he battled it through and he, he was still going if you see what I mean uh, rather than suffering too much obviously you suffer through cancer etc um, but the one the funeral that I went to yesterday a guy I didn't actually know particularly well at all but it was one of those cases a local musician who was only 47 and his death was more surprising, more frightening, more shocking, I suppose, in some ways, the fact that A, he was only 47, but also that he died just like that. He he was halfway through a gig, apparently, and was in the break in the middle of the gig, and and he just he just went. Um, and talking yesterday at the funeral, and actually talking beforehand to some people who we met up with, and talking to other people afterwards, etc., and, and, you know, just generally around and around, and you start to think about that. If you have got to go, and ultimately we all have to at some time, how would you want to go? And a lot of people said that Dave yesterday, the guy whose funeral we went to, that was the ideal way for him to go. Yes, it was far too young. That goes without saying. But um, he, he died doing something that he loved. Okay, he wasn't actually in the act of performing, but he was part way through a set. He was His life had changed. He was, he was in a good frame of mind. His life had taken a better turn in the last year or so. Well, they'd been playing music for decades in, in, in the town. Very well respected musician, which is the reason that I went to his funeral and he was due to play the Smooth Sunday event that um, myself and Pete uh, I spoke to about about before. He was due to play that gig and died literally the night before the gig was supposed, our gig was supposed to happen. So there's that shock. So there's that sort of thought, as I was saying about um, one of the other guys, is that if you could choose your own way of going, a, what would it be? <laughs> I can think of some some things, you know, it's that old thing, isn't there? That people used to say, in the event of a, a nuclear attack, you get the sort of three minute or four minute warning. What would you do in that four minutes? Um, <laughs> we can all think of our own things, I suppose. But this is something different. If you could go, um, that would be the way to do it. Uh, I haven't got a clue. I haven't, must admit, I haven't given this any thought. Maybe halfway through a vlog, but then the vlog would never get finished or something like that. Or playing your favourite music or something. I, I don't know. Um, but this happens so much and it sort of gets you thinking also because it was another one of those funerals where you go to and you find out that the person has lived a far 
greater life than you actually imagined. And a lot of people said the same thing. As I said, I didn't really know the guy very well, but um, I knew a bit. I obviously knew about his musical side, and that he was a local lad, and and so he he built up a lot of friends, school friends, etc. Who lived here all his life, from what I can make out. So there was that side to it. It wasn't that he moved into the town like myself. If I was to go. A lot of the people that I grew up with, school children, etc., and people from my early formative years, or even my teens and twenties, etc., are living thirty or whatever miles away. Um, there's that side of it, but then you you hear all the other things that the people have done, and I wonder whether we're all the same. I mean, I like to think. It made, it made me think. Yesterday was a very reflective day for me because of that, and talking to all these other people and hearing their experiences. And it, it reminded me of another funeral I went to, although I knew a bit about this guy, the guy before. This one, you hear that he did this, he did that, apart from the musician, he did this. He, and he, there were so many things that he did and he, that he was respected for. And I wonder how many of us could actually say the same thing. If your funeral came along, would the people standing up, would you surprise a lot of people by the, the you know, people's reminiscences about you. I actually imagine, I was today thinking about this very reflectively last night, and that's the reason I didn't do the vlog yesterday, apart from the fact that I had a couple of drinks. <laughs> um, I thought I'd leave it to today and then see if I felt like doing it. But I thought, well, yeah, I mean, I've done this, I've done that, you know, this side of thing. One of those things that I've spoken about before, if I, if my funeral was to be next week, should we say, and, um, and people started talking about this side of my life, there would be very few people in the audience, <laughs> that's the right word, congregation, whatever, um, that would say, oh, well, I didn't know about that. That was a completely different side to, to you. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we should be celebrating this. Maybe you should be a bit more open about these things. So to celebrate your life before you die, let people know what you're doing so that they can get into it, uh, rather than it coming out afterwards. Yes, you don't want to go around sort of um, spouting things off and making yourself sound great, which I suppose it could do. But it's a pity sometimes to find out because you might have an interest with somebody and um, and you didn't know about it. Now, I find if I just read a, a, a tweet from or a comment from somebody actually on one of my, my YouTube videos and and he said something which is, is happening to me, that sort of crossover thing now where local people are actually starting to see my videos. I go to you know, you go to things, whether it be tweet-ups or even with musicians and people like that or people that you know, and they started watching your videos and I've seen people and said, oh, I've watched, I've watched some of your videos on YouTube and immediately think, oh, what's coming next? So obviously the first question I always ask is, A, how did you find them uh, initially? And how, well, how did you stumble on, on them in the first place? And the other one being, well, what did you think? And all the reactions I've got so far, apart from the fact, well, I didn't know you'd do that, or why do you do that, was very, very favourable. So maybe we should be putting this out there. Maybe we should be advertising this a bit more. And, and as I said, the other guy, his comment said exactly the same thing, that some of his work colleagues or people that he knew locally said the same thing. They found uh, his videos and liked them as well. And that will probably happen to you. Unless you're doing something completely strange, I suppose the vlogging thing's a bit different because it's the same person, which I said before. So a very reflective day. As I said, it's, it's got me thinking about planning. Uh, and I say planning, it sounds an awful word, but actually thinking about um, making something and writing it down. Not like a will, I suppose, in some ways, which everybody should have, by the way, because that enough cause a lot of problems if you haven't got one, especially if you're married and got kids and property and that sort of stuff. But putting things down about... If, if the worst was to happen, you know, I would want my funeral to be done in a certain way. And I'm not there, but I want certain music to play. And I was going through my iTunes list, I was not picking out sort of certain songs, very morbid. But, you know, sometimes you have, to, you have to face these things. Sometimes you have to think about these things. And it does sound morbid, it does sound depressing, etc. But it doesn't do you a lot of harm. It makes you reflect, it makes you think about things. And... You can come out the other side a better person, even by going to funerals, it makes you think about things and it might change the way that you live your life in a little bit. One of the guys at work who died about, we're getting on for a year now I suppose ago, um, and his death, because of the nature of his death, he died very suddenly, a bit like Dave did, just, just very, very quickly, just bang, just like that. Once again, people said, well, that's not a bad thing. Um, at the age he was, he lived his life, but it changed the way that people view their lives. It shocked people and made people think, well, maybe I could change my life, whether it be health-wise, because this guy did smoke <laughs> quite a lot, but it made people think. And I'm sure I've seen a change in people at work, dieting, exercise, 
looking at the way that they eat and things like that. So, and I'm sure that the Steve, who died you know, that time ago, I'm sure he'd like to think, well, if I help someone in the future, that can only be a good thing, and I'd like to think that as well. So sometimes you can get good come out, can come out of death as well. But to get back to what I was saying, is that I started thinking about this, writing things down, even things that I might want to be said, even people that I might like to say these things, because one of the things yesterday was the funeral, there's some great reminiscences from certain people, certain people have been asked by the family, obviously they were family friends, they said the guy was known locally in the town, now for me, my sort of YouTube, my internet life is a completely different life to my ordinary real life if you want to put it that and as I said earlier a lot of people don't realize that and I'd like that to be expressed in any funeral service that that I was to have um, so maybe I should put that down I, something that I saw somebody do some time ago now and there was a spell of these uh, of people actually thinking about making a video that could be shown on YouTube or even for their family in the event of their death. We have that technology now where we can do that. We can speak from beyond the grave, so to speak. And we can, there's always, no matter when you die, unless you really know what's going to happen, there's always things that you will want to have said. Dave, yesterday, John, the funeral I went to not long ago, who, who'd been ill for a while, but even so, and Steve, who died suddenly last year, as I said, I'm sure they all had things they would have loved to have said to their family, to their friends, to their loved ones generally, to the wider community, to their audience or whatever it was. And they never had that opportunity. And we always say that also with people that die in our families, your, your family or something, whether it be your father, your mother, luckily that's not happened to me yet, but it will sometime. And there's always that regret, oh, I wish I'd said this to them, I wish I'd said that. Some ways we have that opportunity now with this, we can do it by video, we can record a video and we can put down exactly what we want to say to anybody, whether we could do a personal one for our family that they could watch, it would be hard to watch because I don't think I would really like to watch a video of that nature, but it could be, it's, you could actually say exactly what you want, exactly what you feel uh, about those people that you have left behind and you could also do one for all your YouTube people, your internet people and you could actually say something that you want to say about anything, you know, your experience here. You can put a, a goodbye message, I suppose, and thank people for what they've done for you because you wouldn't get that opportunity. That video could be left there. You could leave the instructions, as I said before, with your funeral instructions or something, all those songs you want, and say, well, look, go to this channel, do this, put this video up on my, on my uh, channel, and that can be left there. The channel can be left there, and if people get anything out of it, all so well and good. So a morbid reflective video yes and but as i said i sometimes think it does you good to think about these things yes you can you can sit there and you can mope about it you can go to funerals whether it be someone that's close to you or someone maybe not quite so close um but you can learn something out of it you can learn something out of their life you listen to how of the life of dave yesterday and, and some of the things that came out he was well liked and there's nothing better than having a good life i think isn't it and even if you have if you do die at an early age he led a full and lived a full life and that there's not many people can say that i think and i, I just wonder as i said is whether you could say that about yourself i've done quite a few things in my life i think and so if the worst was to happen i'd like to think that i've i've led a pretty good life <laughs> no intentionally going anywhere yet but you never know you know, these things do happen, being morbid, <laughs> being reflective once again. So, there you go. That's, I'll just say, I've turned on the camera and started speaking after thinking about this, obviously, yesterday. So, what do you think? You know, are you gonna, I'm thinking of, seriously thinking about making a couple of those videos, a one for YouTube, because you can update them at any time. It's a bit like a will. You can update them. If something happens, you can then move on and um, update it every year if you felt so, so doing. Because I've often said that, you know, we leave them behind here. A digital record of our lives if we want to and I know of people who have died and whose channels have been taken over by the family and something and the channels have been left open so that people can watch those videos for, for all time hopefully and, and that's exactly what I'd like to see I wouldn't like to see my channel shut down in the event of my death and the same with other people I love their videos to stay up there if the worst was to happen so there you go I'm going to leave it there be interested in your thoughts as always so thanks for your time I'll speak to you again soon hopefully <laughs> goodbye